What is up YouTube, I'm back with another video. This time, I'm gonna show you how I do my sidechaining in FL Studio. So as you know, there are a lot of plugins that you can use for sidechaining, for example, like Volume Shaper or LFO tools. But in this video, I'm gonna show you a more simple way of achieving that volume docking effect. And this is actually just by doing some volume automation instead. So now I'm just gonna show you how I will do this in a really quick and easy way. Let's go. Okay, so I've just made a really, really simple beat. This is nothing fancy, just for the sake of showing you how you can dock your bass to your kick. So this is just the beat without any volume docking or side chaining. So here in the top is my kick drum, and here in the bottom is my bass line, and then I have some other drum elements and some e piano and some organ and a pad. Nothing fancy. So as you could hear, the kick drum and the bass line are interfering with each other, and we want to remove this with some side chaining. And we're going to do this with volume automation. I'm just going to solo my kick drum and my bass line. So as you can see, like the kick drum pattern here, it's not straight floor to the floor to the floor. So we have to do some volume automation. And how you can do this easily in FL Studio is to just go to the mixer track, go to where your bass line is. Mine is here. Then I'm just gonna apply a simple gain knob. And this is just the panomatic. I think you can use the fruity balance also, just something with a volume knob. Right click. Create automation clip. And now you have an automation clip for your baseline. So what we can do, I, I tend to just make a new track, pull up the automation. So it's just right beneath the kick drum because then I can e more easily see where I have to do the docking. And now it's just a matter of docking the volume of your baseline when the kick is playing. As you can hear already, like it's docking, it's removing the the baseline, the volume of the baseline, and it's making more room for the kick drum to punch through your mix. And instead of just having to draw this all the way across, you can actually just do a cut, have it here, so we just paint in the, the volume automation. So right here, this is where it's really useful to do this way instead of doing the volume shaper or the LFO tool way, is that here you actually have a little bit more control. This one and notch it. So it's actually applied where the kick drum is playing. And then we can just shorten it a little bit here and then apply it here. Because in this way, we make sure that the bass line is docking whenever the kick drum is playing. And I have applied a lot of swing to my kick drums. So they're not like just playing straight on the grid. So this is the reason why I like to use volume docking, like volume automation for my side chain. Like it seems a little bit manual, but whenever you have just like your your pattern in check, like just made it for this pattern clip here, you can just copy it like across the entire of your arrangement. So it's just like the, the first part of it is a little bit like tedious, but whenever you have just done it, then it makes totally sense. So right now we actually have some side chaining using volume automation. Let's try to listen to it without the volume automation. So if you're not on like really good studio speakers, you might not hear a big of a difference, but trust me, there is a difference. And I can actually show it to you visually. Go to the mixer track here. I have my bass line here, routed to a low end bus, and also my kick drum is routed to a low end bus. So if you look at the metering of the low end bus, the kick drum and the bass line, whenever the notes are overlapping each other, it's actually boosting up the volume because they are like they are fighting for attention and for space in the mix. And this results in my mix actually clipping. And I don't want that. So let's have a listen. So as you can see on this meter here, it's going above zero dB. And that's no go because then it's clipping. So if we apply the, the volume automation, 
the mix is staying under zero. And that's because the, the transient of the bass and the transient of the kick drum is not on top of each other. So the kick drum is shining through and then the bass line is being like, you know, docked away. I don't know if you got like this visualization thing, but I hope it, it makes sense. This is actually it for this video. I just wanted to show you like I mean, a really, really raw format that you can do side chaining without actually investing in any of third party plugins like Volume Shaper or LFO tool. So I hope this video helped you a little bit to get the idea of using volume automation for side chaining in FL Studio. If you liked the video, it will mean so much to me if you will hit that like button or even subscribe to the channel. It will help me to build more content for you guys in the future. And also, I hope you want to be a part of this community where I and all of the other producers share a lot of tips and tricks with each other. This is just a platform for promoting inspirational content and also like new techniques and tricks and ways to enhance your productions. I'm also a bedroom producer myself, and I really love to find new ways to do productions related stuff. So this was one of them, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. So I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.